Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Thursday, September 12th, 2024. 12th, how many days from 12 to 28? Remember, September 28th, coming up soon, our Peace and Freedom Rally. That's right. Judge Napolitano, Scott Ritter, Max Blumenthal, Anya Parampil, and others. Music. We're trying to get as many people here as we can to bring out the word of peace that's been blacklisted from the news. And again, if you watch that stupid debate the other night, you know, the Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck debate, uh, both of them warmongers, both of them warmongers. Oh, Trump says he's going to end the Ukraine war. He doesn't say how. And Harris just keeps uh, more weapons for Ukraine. And and both of them will will defend uh, Israel. You ask, Israel has the right to exist, uh, defend itself. That's what I forget. Nobody else does. And they keep spewing out this bullshit as they're murdering people all over. So not a peace. Word about peace from these little clowns playing for president. Nobody talks about peace. Go fuck off. No peace. Again, it's to cover your magazine this week. Politicians, yep, want war. People want peace. So we're doing everything we can to stop these pieces of shit from destroying our lives. Anyway, going on to the markets. Hey, gold, huh? 2000 $558 an ounce. The Trends Journal, the only magazine, the only magazine that I know of in the world that had forecast that 2024 would be a golden year for gold. Gold is up over $500 an ounce since we made that forecast. And this is just the beginning. As we said earlier in the year, we could see gold going up another 500 bucks. And again, you're not getting this from the Wall Street Journal or the toilet paper record in New York Times. You're only getting it from the Trends Journal. So subscribe to the Trends Journal. It's a grand total of $2.56 a week. Nothing. Again, a lousy cup of coffee a day. And we're giving you what nobody else in the world is. So going on to the markets, the Dow is up because the inflation numbers that came in today. And let's see, the, uh, the producer price index reflected a 0.2% rise in wholesale prices. So that means the Fed's going to lower interest rates. The bet is how much they're going to lower them. The street's saying 25 basis points. Others are saying 50 basis points. Again, this isn't rocket science. The lowest, low interest rates go the deeper the dollar falls. The deeper the dollar falls, the higher gold prices go. And the dollar's in for a deep fall. This fall. You ready? Interest payments on the national debt top a trillion dollars as deficit swells. Isn't that a nice prostitute headline from CNBC? Payments on national debt. How about disaster? Who could pull off this shit and get away with it? Scumbag politicians, that's who. You go deep in debt. You let your, your, your deficit swell. You're gone, man and women. You're screwed and not the way I like to be. Yeah, but the government, they could pull all the fucking shit they want. Okay, the uh, government has laid out $1.049 trillion in debt, up 30% from the same period a year ago. The jump in debt service cost the U.S. budget deficit surged in August, edging closer to $2 trillion for the full year. No, the dollar's not going to die. It's going to stay great. Again, this is the beginning of the death of the dollar. And again, who could get away with this bullshit? Oh, the markets went up. Ah. China's rapid slowdown drives world oil demand growth downturn. The um, According to the IEA, it's in the Wall Street Journal, Yep. 
Oil prices went up today, $2 a barrel about, ah, because there's a storm down in the Gulf of Mexico. Total, total. In the first half of this year, global demand growth continued to decelerate with gains of 800,000 barrels a day, the lowest since 2020, according to the IEA. 2020, the height of the COVID war, that's what oil is. That's how slow it is. Again, the numbers are all there. And this is, by the way, old news. It's in your Trends Journal this week. Last week, the week before, and the month before, and the month before. The only thing that's going to bring oil prices up is Israel's ramping up the Middle East war and the United States and the UK, or is it the F-U-C-K, because they're a little bit of little fucks there anyway, like anywhere. They're running the country, not the people. Again, the politicians. Election time coming. Hey, politicians, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? I'm some little piece of shit with a bad attitude. Couldn't fight my way out of a paper bag. But if you don't do what I tell you to do, I'll get the cops after you. That's America. So going back, the times are only going to get worse. The economy is going down globally. So going back to oil, if the UK, the United States send the advanced weapons so Ukraine could strike deeper into Russia, that's going to drive up oil prices too. So Israel ramping up the war and the, and the United States and the EU and the, and the UK escalating the Ukraine war, that will drive up oil prices. Oil prices could go to $130 a barrel. If they do, everything crashes, the equity markets and the economy. <laughs> this is a story, <laughs> Financial Times. Fed humbled on capital rules plan after fierce Wall Street opposition. Just months after unraveling Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank last year, the unraveling, Michael Barr unveiled a set of guardrails for the biggest U.S. lenders and an un compromising defense of why they were needed. Because they don't have enough money to cover their losses. But being that the banks, the bandits are running the country, they killed the legislation or the action that was going to be taken by the Federal Reserve. Yep. Gone. This is not a middle ground rep rep proposal, said Jeremy Kress, former Fed lawyer who teaches at the University of Michigan. One on nearly every point of contention, this is the capitulation to the banks. Total capitulation. Now, Nowhere is anybody talking about the office building bust that's going to bring down the banks. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody, nobody. They're not going to have the money to cover this. And they were asking to put more money in there, but they're not doing it. So get ready for the worst. Chinese stocks fell to the lowest since January 2019. That's just before the year before the COVID war. Again, Week after week, we have a spotlight on China in your Trends Journal, what's going on, what to expect, and where they're going, and what it means. EU business confidence in China is rated as low. And then, of course, you know, the inflation numbers that came out yesterday and cooled, and that's going to have the feds cut the rates. But when you look at what cooled... <laughs> Meats, poultry, fish, and eggs. No, they went up 0.8%. Motor vehicle to repairs up 0.6%. <clears throat> Insurance motor vehicle, 
Dairy and related products up 0.5%. Rent on primary residence up 0.4%. So what went down? Cereals and baking products. Gasoline. Electricity. So I'm making this point because yes, the number has gone down, but they're still very high and they're going up across the board. The people can't afford to buy what they are. Look at all these dollar generals or whatever they are, Dollar Tree, whatever this dollar, that dollar, all these stores that are closing down. Week after week after week after week, we have the job losses, like our hundredth week of doing it, and as the businesses keep going bust because the global economy going bust. So this came out in the Wall Street Journal today. We had it in Wall Street, we had it in the article yesterday. Burger fee is latest chain to file chapter eleven. Again, latest chain. Nobody talks about what caused this, the COVID war, when everything was locked down and the lives of billions of people were destroyed and their livelihoods. PWC to lay off 1,800 as they revamp operations. Again, every week we're giving you the layoffs that nobody else is giving you. Unicredit takes Commerce Bank stake. UPS buys healthcare logistics company. Anglo Gold, Ashanti to buy minor. All right. Each week in the Trends Journal, we have the bigs keep getting bigger. We're nothing more than plantation workers of slave land here. And then again, you look at the S&P 500, as we say, three companies own 88% of it. BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street. 1% own 54% of the Dow. The richest. So that's the USSA, and most of the world. <sighs> Seal hostage deal or face bigger war warns minister. Speaking to journalists, this guy Gallant, who's the um, defense guy over there in Israel, said reaching a deal, quote, was a strategic opportunity that gives us a high chance to change the security situation on all fronts. Israel should achieve an agreement that would bring about a pause for six weeks. Oh, why not six weeks and three days? Who the fuck are you talking to six weeks? Remember the first peace deal they did when they returned like a hundred something hostages? And as soon as that was over, whew, Israel started bombing the crap out of Gaza. Six weeks? You know what that is? The genocide going on in Gaza is hardly in the news in America. And the stupidity and the arrogance. He goes on to say that um, Israel's military pressure on Hamas has created, quote, the necessary conditions for a deal and that after 11 months of war, quote, Hamas as a military formation no longer exists. Okay. If they no longer exist, why are you bombing the shit out of the place and killing all these people every day? Oh, hey, we could do anything we want. Yeah. This is an article from the Turler Paper Record yesterday. Palestinian militants in West Bank flex new capabilities adding to a spiral of violence. In the shadow of the war in Gaza, a conflict in the Israeli-occupied West Bank... Wait a minute. Israeli-occupied? Stolen fucking land? In violation of the Geneva Convention and Article 242 of the United Nations? You got no right being there. Oh, I forgot. God gave you this land. It's right in the good book, Section 8. Yeah. This is the language they use. 
A shooting by a Jordanian citizen that killed three Israelis on Sunday at a heavily fortified West Bank border, having no fucking right to be there. You ready? Came after three recent attempts by Palestinian militants to set off car bombs. Oh, they're militants. So somebody breaks into your house with a gun and they try to kill you and you kill them, you're a militant. Taken together, the violence constitutes the most complex <laughs> sequences of attacks relating to the volatile West Bank in years, according to analysts. The escalation comes as Israel struggles to contain wider battles, not only in Gaza, but also with Hezbollah in Lebanon. It goes on. Militants in the West Bank say the fighting in Gaza. Militants. Militants. They killed Israel in the West Bank has killed over 600 people so far, according to the United Nations. 600 people they killed, and when you fight against them, you're a militant. Don't subscribe to the Trends Journal. Swallow the shit from the toilet paper record. Yeah, you swallow the shit, and you got the, the, the paper, the toilet paper to wipe your ass with the shit. Several of the recent West Bank attacks occurred as the Ismaili military mounted some of its most expansive operations in years. Oh, yeah. Killing people in the West Bank that you have no fucking business being in, it's against the law. You don't hear Trump say this. You don't hear Harris say this because they're both paid off. And it keeps going here. To Palestinians, the Israeli raids only increase Palestinian animosity toward the Israeli occupation and have done little to temper the militants' abilities. Look at the language. Wait a minute. Hey, fuckface, who wrote this? Oh, Patrick Kinsley. Kunsley. Kunsley. Because only a Kunsley would write this shit. You're a journalist. You're a little fucking prostitute. You're a media whore. To Palestinians, the Israeli raids only increase Palestinian animosity. Yeah, no shit. Toward the Israeli occupation and have done little to temper the militants' abilities. You're a fucking militant when they're slaughtering you, you're robbing your land and blowing your houses up and throwing you out? Don't subscribe to the Trends Journal. Swallow their shit. Be a good American. Bow down and take it up. Lindsey Graham's you know what. Because that's what he probably likes. Anyway. Yeah. This on the wall shit journal. Gaza students learn in tents and shelters. Could you imagine this? Learn in tents and shelters. Two-thirds of the schools have been destroyed. Hamas is living in all of them. We got Hamas in all of them. We got to like to blow up all the schools. Okay, can you believe this shit? And they get away with it. Oh, Israeli airstrike kills at least 34 at school. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Israeli airstrike kills 64 Palestinians across the Gaza Strip as of Wednesday. Oh, but the hostages. All the, yeah, again, totally opposed to what Hamas did, but... Yet yeah, terrible news that hostages were killed, but this is only in, uh, you know, antiwar.com. Report. You ready? This is from Haaretz. Elite Israeli forces destroy Iranian-linked military facility in Syria. Just came out. Elite. Elwe're elite. We know how to murder and kill better than anybody. We're trained. What the fuck are you doing in Syria? Could you imagine if Syria and Iran did this in Israel? Oh, my God, how terrible. Oh, Israel has the right to defend itself. They could go anywhere they want and kill anybody where they want. How about if it read, 
Iranian forces destroy American-linked military facilities in Syria. America has military bases in Syria. We have no right being there. But this is okay for Israel and America to do what they want. Yep. According to, yep, yep. Isn't that nice? And then on the Ukraine war, World War III has begun. It, you know, as we said a long time ago, Putin, Putin lifting Ukrainian missile restrictions with NATO at war with U.S. Putin spoke as the U.S. top diplomats, diplomats, diplomat, diplo on the mat and take it up the ass. That's who they are. Diplomats, little sucking pieces of shit. Diplomat spoke as UN's top diplomat discussed easing rules on firing Western weapons into Russia, which Kiev has been pressing for for more than two and a half years. He said this would be a significant way to change the very nature of the conflict. It would mean that NATO countries, the U.S. European countries, are at war with Russia. He added, "Okay, all right." Come to our peace rally. We're doing everything we can to stop this. Put your money where your mind and heart and soul are and donate. Help us. Or, and come here. Go to OccupyPeace.com for more information. Yep. In that case, then taking into account the change of nature of the conflict, we will take appropriate decisions based on the threats that we can face. Putin's comments came a day after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Oh, I talked about diplomats. My daddy was the ambassador to Hungary. My, my, my uncle was the ambassador to Belgium. I'm a little daddy's boy, a member of the club. You think that's why a little piece of crap like me got so high in the system? gave his strongest hint yet that the White House is about to lift restrictions on Ukraine using long-range weapons supplied by the West and key military targets inside Russia. This, this is horrific. You ready? This is speaking with the foreign U.S. Foreign Secretary, David Lammy. Yeah, Lammy. Lammy. Blinken said he and Lammy would, re quote, Report to their bosses. Bosses? That's a quote. Bosses. Shitheads? Running the UK and the United States. These are our bosses. Yep. And this is the language. British government sources indicate that a decision had already been made to allow Ukraine to use the Storm Shadow cruise missiles on targets inside Russia. And... Starmer, a little clown boy playing prime minister of the UK, is going to meet with Biden. And they say, quote, the two leaders are planning to discuss the war in Ukraine. Leaders, leaders. How fucking bad could it be that these are our leaders? They couldn't lead me anywhere. But they lead the fucking countries. It's a shit show. And again, go to your, your trench journal. We're giving you nobody else in the world is giving you. This thing is like what, about 250 pages this week. It's huge. Again, you read what you want. You can listen to it too. And it's in all different languages, many different languages. <sighs> Novo Nordisk claims obesity drug effective for under 12s. This is in the Financial Times. A Novo Nordisk weight loss drug is safe and effective in children as young as six. Kids are fucking obese at six years old. One in five children have obesity. Are you going to take a drug? How about stop eating shit? Could you handle that one? Stop eating shit. But as with adults, the drug, and you get it way down the bottom, led to side effects of nausea and vomiting. And those who stopped using it regained weight immediately. But don't forget to take the drugs. Oh, by the way, 
first book I worked on, didn't write it, worked on it. My former wife, may she rest in peace, sold it to Warner Books, Natural Healing. Not a word. Again, you look at the pictures from Woodstock back in 69, my generation. Everybody's thin. And now it's blimpitis. It's a, it's a freak show. And we got it. But take the drugs. Don't get in, don't get in good shape. Don't do what you can. Ah. So anyway, check out the great video I did yesterday with Judge Andrew Napolitano with a great man. People love him and for good reason. He's a real, real, real patriot of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, which <laughs> we got a Bill of No Rights now. So thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to the Trends Journal and make it here on September 28th. Thank you.